chapter three. Okay, this is about performing calculations with formulas and functions. So we will learn about autofill options. And then for this autofill options, we need to understand uh, references, you know, relative cell reference, absolute cell reference, and mixed cell reference. So please read this content before you do any exercise. And then we will also learn some functions related to uh, statistics, you know, maximum, minimum, average, mid, mod, like that, and then some time functions. Okay, and then some uh, a uh, view lookup table so we will see use of uh, vertical lookup functions as well so let's try practice first okay so make sure to uh, to read the content the content first so before you do this homework so it will help so whenever you do the homework and if you have any questions there are similar exercises in the in the content of each chapter so make sure to read thoroughly each chapter before you do the homework all right so first of all i will copy 3-2 in the student data files folder in my into my working folder and then rename it as claims claims okay and then from this Okay, B4, uh, B3, okay, write your name in B, the cell B3, and then B4, we will write the date. But in this case, we will use a formula. So go to the formulas tab. There are a bunch of formulas related to uh, some categories here. So we will select date and time arrow, and then today. So select this today function. And the always function must have starting with equal sign and function name and then parenthesis. If there's nothing in the parenthesis, then you can just leave it. But uh, if there's an argument inside parenthesis required, then you have to write some arguments. But in this case, you don't need to write anything in the uh, inside the parenthesis. Okay, and then click OK. So the date is automatically included in this cell. Okay, B uh, number three, B four. Okay, number four. Okay, claims are labeled sequentially according to the pattern. Okay, look at this. Go to the, the claim center log. In the claim center log worksheet in E five. Okay, E five. We will include the case number. So CL claims claim and the number 22515 and next one will be claim 22516 and so on so write down these two and then select these two cells they use autofill then it will automatically fill the others so when you do the autofill okay look at look at the let, let me click a cell address Okay, once I click this cell, look at this one. The number is 17, right? 17. So when I copy the, copy the formula down, what happens? Once you copy to the next one, next row, then the row changes. So the row number changes, and then it increases automatically. Actually, you know, it increases the contents. Uh, we don't have a, okay, we have a data inside. Uh, there's no, uh, uh, address yet so once you have a uh, data like this then when you do autofill then it copies everything from here look at this the color is different right so type in these two and then use this autofill okay so the colors you have a banded color like this okay number five in H, so call, this is column H. Okay, this will display the whole time in seconds. So we're gonna follow this. Okay, calculate the difference between the column G and column F. So type equal sign between column G. So difference between column G and F. 
So G minus column. So why don't you click G5 minus F5? Or you can type G5 minus F5. And then put parenthesis. Sorry. Okay, put parenthesis. So if you, you know, just like now, if there is uh, you know error messages, then press escape key escape and then and and then multiply 24 multiply by 60 multiply by 60 so we get these values in seconds okay and then change this one into seconds so go to clip home and then make it a, a number and then reduce the decimals decimal place twice so 29 okay this is what I did what I did is I just write down wrote the typed formulas like this g5 minus f5 parenthesis asterisk and then multiply all these things and enter and then change the format into number and then reduce the decimal places okay letter b And then we need to we need to fill the other rows as well. So why don't you? Uh, okay, what happens if if you use autofill? You know, it automatically copies this one down. You know the the background too, right? So Control Z. So why don't I right click this one and then bring it one more time? and then fill without formatting so this one copy down copy this formula down but it didn't copy the actual format the you know the color format like this and then try again so select these two then right click on the auto fill this lower right corner right click uh okay you don't have to do right click in this case in this case just double click this auto fill okay again okay, from this right click and drag it right click and drag it okay fill without formatting first so we got these two and then select these two and then auto format that's a matter of the the auto fill okay so as you see this you know once once each row copies the cell with mean, the formula from the above cell you know the row changes automatically so the row number is 9 here and next one is row number is 10 next one is row number 11 but the column is column stays same the column letter stays same because we are copying the formula down right copy copy down if you go to the right then the column num column letter will will increase but since you are copying formula down the row number changes okay keep in mind this we will uh, try this is uh, you know this is related to you know, relative cell address okay letter c a uh, letter b in i okay use if function to return the value one if the hold time from h column h is greater than hold time in b10 Okay, what is B10? Okay, B10 is this one. Oh, B10. Oh, sorry, B10 is 20, right? B10 is 20. So, if this number, any of this number, each of this number is greater than 20, then we will return 1, right? Return 1. So, equal sign, we will use fun if function. So, if, parenthesis, if requires three arguments. The first argument is, logical test the logical test is you know whether it's true or not so uh the f5 right f5 if f5 is greater than greater than b10 right b10 so in this case okay, after b10 enter function key f4 okay, f4 look at this as you press the F, F key, F4 key, 
there is a dollar sign attached to each you know each column and then each column and and the row number right if you press f4 again then the dollar sign toggles right toggles all right so make it dollar b dollar 10. okay dollar b dollar 10 means this is this you know this cell is anchored this cell you know when you copy the when you copy this formula down actually the row number changes right so h5 from this h5 h5 will be six seven and nine the row number increases and 10 also increased 10 should become 11 12 13 and so on as you copy the uh, the, the formula down but since you put the dollar sign that means anchor that means this 10 and b will remain unchanged so when you copy this cell if there is a dollar sign in front of it that cell does not change even you copy to different uh, different cell that cell never changes okay all right and escape uh, -uh. Okay, let me do it again if h5 is greater than b10 and then press f4 or you can you can enter dollar b dollar 10. greater than we will return what one otherwise return zero so we enter three arguments separated by comma and then parenthesis so whenever this hold, hold time is greater than 20 seconds it and you know it displays one otherwise zero so we will do the same thing right click or uh, bring it one more down so we will fill this without formatting first and then double click this order field so let's check uh this number is less than 20 right less than 20 so it displays zero and others are greater than 20 is displays one less than 20 so zero and so on okay so look at this uh when you copy copy the formula down look at this you know dollar b dollar 10 stays the same right but six the row number is increased h6 is increased this one it became h7 but dollar b dollar 10 stays the same next one becomes h8 dollar b dollar 10 h9 dollar b dollar 10 right so if you don't wanna change the row or column you have to put the dollar sign we call this absolute cell address the absolute cell address okay doc so you know okay one more time uh if you so whenever if if there if let's say what if we have dollar b without this dollar 10 dollar so dollar b dollar 10 that means since 10 does not have dollar sign when you copy this cell down in, in the same column then this number this row number will increase 11 12 13 and so on okay so i'm gonna put i will remain it i will put the dollar sign okay letter l uh i'm sorry column l okay let us see in column k okay the total the duration in minute it should be okay this one mentioned subtract column j from column g so actually it's gotta be g minus you know j minus g you know they, 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 there's a misprint this gotta be g and this gotta be a j okay so that you know the end time minus the begin the starting time so this one should be j minus g5 okay enter all right and then okay we need to okay, double click it again because we need to put parentheses and then multiply this one convert this one into uh into minutes so multiply this parentheses by 24 
multiply by 60 enter and then this is the time format so we will change this one into number and then remove into the number so 20 point 20 uh, 20 minutes and 22 sec uh in a 20 20 point 22 seconds right so we will change this one in, we will round this round use a round function so that it will display the next highest integer so that is round up so why don't we use the function name round up so type round up and then parenthesis move your mouse to the right i mean the cursor to the right press comma okay enter comma so this one requires two arguments the first argument is the number and this number is a calculation j minus g and then the number digit is the number of this is a round up digit so if you press zero that means zero means uh you know the once digit so round up once digit and if this is one then this is the tenth digit if this is two then the you know hundredth digit so we want to round this one to the nearest I mean, next the highest integer highest integer so make it zero okay, zero then it becomes 21 okay if we put this one one then the, this is round up to the nearest one okay, nearest um, nearest tenth so you got you got you know it shows the the tenth digit so in this case the second argument should be zero and then we're going to move this one, the decimal places. All right. And then also use this click, right click and then hold, hold down the right click. And then drag it one more. One more cell down and then fill without formatting. So we will keep the band, you know, the, the band color. And then select these two. Select this two and then auto fill. Okay, so this one makes sense. Okay, letter L. Okay, letter L. Okay, we will use the cumulative uh, minutes. So this will add up all the numbers. So this number will be here and this number will be some of these two. And this cell will be some of these three. This cell will be some of everything from left you know, left until up to the same row okay so this is how you can do it so select uh let's let's select the range starting from k5 and bring it all the way down okay bring it all the way down until uh -oh, i went too much okay, like this Okay, and then right click the lower right corner, right click. And actually, no, right click. So move your mouse on the lower right corner, then you will see this little icon. Then click this. So you have a pop up menu. So from this, select the totals tab. And then go all the way to the right click the right arrow look at this running okay running can you see the little icon so this will make a total of everything and then write it on the right side right you know the the column on the right of the selected column so select this so this one gives all the uh this is sum of everything from the left okay so if you click this, let's, let me move this one up. So if you click this, then this will be the sum of everything from the left column all the way up to the same row. All right. So I double click this, then this sum of everything from the left. Okay. And then we need to uh, remove the bolt. So select this range from l5 to l1000 what was it 
and select this row and this range and then remove the bolt remove the bolt all right and then the last row should the number of the last row should be uh, 3000 32,597. This is correct. Okay, B6. Okay, B6, we will count, use the count function to count the values in column F. So, equal sign, use the count function, count, the function name is count, and then the value, we count the rows starting from, you know, F column F. F column F means the entire F column. And then this will count only the numbers. So there is this many. Okay, B7. Okay, divide the value. So of course, divide the, we will divide B6 by B5. Enter. So we got this number and B7. Okay, B7. Okay, now C, B11 to B13. Okay, this is every this is average median and common so common is a mode and then this one is the minimum and the maximum so use the minimum function maximum function average function so they are all in here so click this arrow and this is about average so click average so the function name is average okay, average of well, okay, this is the average of the column h so type h you know, column H. Okay, median is, we can use the median function. The function name is median, so write the median. Median, and then same thing as, same as H, column H. And common whole time means, this is the most, you know, the most frequently occurred numbers, right? Mostly, frequently, most frequently occurred numbers. So we will use mod mod h colon h and then oh, oh in this case well, we better use mod dot single s n g l okay okay oh, in this case i misspelled the function name it's got a m o d e right m o d e and then single this one All right, and next one is uh, shortest, that means minimum. So use the min function, h colon h. And then this is the longest whole time is the largest, the greatest, so maximum, h colon h. So all these functions are in here. Some, okay, average, uh, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, and the mod, you need to type mod, or you can use the function more functions or you can use the formulas formulas and then they are in uh, one of these three okay they're in one of these three okay let's try next one b14 Okay, mean maximum, okay, we did it. Letter E is B18, B20, B18, average call. These are the average calls related to the column K. So we will repeat the same thing. Okay, so the average is equals A, V, E, R, A, G, and then the column is K. So K, column K. And the median is use the mode of median, median, of the column, all the data is in column K. Enter, and the common call is the most frequently occurred numbers. So that is mod, use mod, uh, single, select this single from the column K, right? K, so K, column K. And then shortest minimum of K, column K. And the long is same thing. That's the maximum value in column K. Okay. 
Okay, F, B21, and B22. Uh, that's what we did, and G is cell 25. Okay, this is the sum to calculate the total amount of agent time on the phone in column K. So we will make a sum of everything in column K first. So total agent is equal to sum of everything in column K. All right. And then we want to divide this into 60, uh, divided by 60 to express the total as hours. So divided by 60. All right. And then use the round function to the nearest total. Uh, round the value to the nearest whole number, whole hour. So it's going to be the, we will use the round. This time use the round. So type round function right after the equal sign. Round and parenthesis. So we will round this number, right? This number. So comma and then the number, the number of digit is zero. So you will round uh, to the nearest whole number with the the one digit. All right, then uh, the work the workload per hour. Okay, B twenty six is equal to. Okay, divide B twenty five, the total agent time by. Uh, divide the value by. Okay, by the value in B5. Okay, B5, what's the B5? Okay, B5 is this, call center open, 10 hours. So just type B5, enter. Okay, and then use the round function. So this value will be rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay, nearest tenth. So we will just use the round function. Round. And then nearest tenth, the digit is one. Okay, one digit. I mean, the you know, tenth digit. Okay, enter. Okay, B27, determine the whole time. Okay, you, uh, whole time, you no, know, failure, failure rate by using the sum function. Okay, so this will be equal to sum of what? Everything in the column I. So I, column I. Okay, and then divide this number by the total number of... Okay, and then divide the sum by the total number of calls over in B6. So divide by B6. Okay, what is B6? This number. Okay. Okay, number seven. Number seven. Now let's format the, this worksheet as follows. Okay, scroll it up. Okay, cell B5 and B10. So click B5. Click B5. And then hold down the control key and then click B10. So we selected two cells and then apply the cell style. Cell style is input. Input cell style. So Select the cell styles and then input. Select this input. Okay, now apply the calculation cell styles to the non adjacent ranges. So those ranges are B6 to B7. So click B6, B7. So we, we select these two. And then hold down the control key. Okay, hold down the control key. Select starting from B. 11 to B15, still hold down the control key, and then drag the range B18 to B22. Okay, so we selected multiple you know, non-adjacent range, ranges. So the sales, sales style is what? Uh, okay, the sales style is, let me, okay, calculation, calculation. So calculation is this one. Right, click this. 
Okay, so you know the format changes, the style changes. Okay, the last one is B25 to B27. B25, B27, and apply output. So click the cell styles and then select output. This one. All right, and number eight. Okay, in the staffing calculation, cal look at this. Okay, let me scroll, let me uh, zoom out. So this is how it looks like, how our data looks like. All right, and then staffing calculator. Okay, use the goal set to determine how many agents will be on. Okay, for this one, uh, B23. Okay, B23 is this, and B26 is this. So what will you use our goal sick? Okay, goal sick is, it works like this. Okay, if the staff size is set to 92, and so on. Okay, B, uh, okay, uh, select this. Okay, why don't, okay, the goal sick is in, okay, so click the data tab first, and then here it is, uh, in a what if analysis, okay, what if. Okay, click the scenario, uh, okay, click this goal sick. Okay, so from here, okay, we will set this, okay, the set, the set cell. Okay, we want to set, okay, for this one, click B26. So we want to set this value equal to 92. Okay, 92 agents. And then we want to change the cell number, cell address, this one. So based, if, so what if the cell address of this B26 is 92, then what should be this value? So this is our a goal to find out. So, okay, the set cell is B26, and I'm gonna set this cell to the value 92 by changing the cell address B23. Okay, and then click OK. So this will calculate automatically and give us an estimate uh, not goal for this number. All right. So this one is automatically gives you know this formula okay that is a sick uh, goal sick so let's try number nine so click the claims uh, conclusion tab okay enter the following values as integer cell b5 So in B5, enter the expected calls per hour passed on the calcula calculated value in B7. On the claim center log. So claim center log, claim center log is this one. And then the B7. Okay, B7 is this one, right? So we can try this. So click the uh, click the this uh, the claims conclusion. Click this bits B five and hit enter, enter, and then you know equal sign. There is an equal sign here. Equal sign. Click the claims enter log, and then B seven, and then hit enter. So we got this value. Okay, or you can just type in a 123. Still okay. Okay, round up to the next highest integer. So double click this and then type round top round up function. Round up function. Yeah, round up and then open parenthesis. Go all the way to the right, comma. Okay, next highest integer. So we got a, the second argument is zero. Enter. Okay, we got this number because uh, maybe we should use you know, number directly. 
So instead of the address, we better use numbers. So what, that was 120. That was 128.3, right? Okay, round up. Round up. Hmm. Okay, misspelled, right? Okay, letter B. Okay, B6 will be B6 will be the value in B23 on the Staffing calculator worksheet B23. So, staffing calculator worksheet B23 is 60, right? So, type 60. Type 60. Okay, and then B7 is enter 20 as the hold time goal in seconds. So, enter 20. And then B8, enter. Enter the value in the cell B18, B18 in the claim center lock, B18. So what is B18? 2541. And then next highest integer. So round up to the next highest integer. So it should be 26. So anything, you know, this one tenth digit has a number, a number other than zero. So it's gotta be 26. So type 26 here. Okay. And then B9. Okay, B9 is divide the value. Okay, divide the value in B8 by 60. Enter. Okay, B12. Uh, calculate the work hours by multiplying. Multiply the values in B5. So this is equal to B5 multiply by an asterisk B9. Okay, B13 is equal to divide B12 by B6. Divide it. Okay, just follow the instruction. This one is simple. Okay. Number 11 is in B16. Okay, use the V lookup. Uh, now we have a vertical lookup. The V means vertical. And then H means horizontal. So V lookup is a vertical lookup. So, you know, the, the lookup table is, you know, we will look up vertically. Vertically. All right, so in B, cell B6. Cell B6. Okay, in the cell B16, use the VLOOKUP. So that is equal to VLOOKUP, parenthesis. Okay, this is a VLOOKUP, you know, VLOOKUP is a vertical lookup function. So lookup value will be B6. We're going to look up the value in B6. B6 is 60, right? So you can type 60 or B6, still okay. So we will look up this value 60 from Table array. Table array means from a table. And the table will be E5 to H32. So E5 is starting from this one. E5 is this one. And all the way down, all the way down to the right. So that will be B, sorry, E5, all the way to H32. Okay, so if there is a match, so look at this. You know, the first column, okay, this is the table. This is the lookup table. And then we will vertically look up the first column. Look up number 60 in the first column. If there is a 60 exact match, like a 60, then it will return the value in the second column or third column or fourth column or so on. So in this case, we will return the second column, the value in the second column. So since 60 matches here, it will display the, the value in the second column, which is 48.47%. So if, if we are looking for the exact match, so select false. Okay, or you can type false. 
false and the parenthesis. So look at the arguments. There are four arguments in the vertical lookup table, a vertical lookup function. The first argument is for the lookup value. And then you are looking for this value from this range. And then once it finds the value, it will return the value in the second column. And then false means looking for the exact match. Okay, enter. So this is correct, you know, since this one has a 60, it will return 48.47%, right? Okay, B17, so B17, enter the same V lookup table, so vertical lookup, V lookup, parenthesis, the lookup value, okay, now return the third, third column, the value in the third column. So we will do the same thing. So lookup value is 60, B6 from E5 to H32. So from this table, so if we find the value, then return the value in the third column. We were looking for the false means exact match. False means exact match, right? Okay, number 18. Now number 18 is divide the, okay, so equals Divide the value in B17 by 60 to display for the time in minutes. Okay, number 19, enter the same VLOOKUP function. So VLOOKUP parenthesis B6 comma from the table E5 to H32. And then we will return the value in the fourth column using the exact match. So I'll write down false. Okay. So if you see this, look at this one. So since this is looking for the value, right? Looking for the value 60. So from the first column, always look for the values from the first column. So vertically, so going all the way down and it matches 60, then returns. The first column, which is this one, get the second column, 184.42 is this value, and the third one is this fourth column value. Okay, that's the VLOOKUP. Okay, number 12, the conclusion. So we're going to write some conclusion here. Okay, the question is this, is the number of agents, the agents is what, how many? 60, right? 60 agents. And all 60 agents will be, uh, are they, you know, these agents will be available on calls sufficient? Is it sufficient to meet the demand of the calls? Well, you know, the probability of waiting on hold is 48, more than 48%. So 60 agents is not enough to cover all these calls because you know more more than 48 percent are on waiting right so actually no it is not sufficient so we can conclude it something like this uh no the okay 60 right 60 agents are not sufficient Safi to answer the calls because there is 48, 47% of probability, probability of probability of waiting on hold. So so more, so more agents need to be hired. Something like this. Okay, so you don't have to write the exact, uh, exact information. Change the conclusion information. Now the purpose is what? Just know what the, what the result shows. So with the six agents, it is not enough. You know, it's not enough to cover all the you know, phone calls from the customers because there are 48% you know, waiting on hold, right? Okay, so we are done for this one.